proclaim the resurrection of the life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and is committed to me in faith shall not die forever. to um, celebrate the life of Krista through not just uh, the prayers and the talk, but also um, in the conversations we have. My name is Rhonda, and uh, I'm uh, the rector at Church of the Epiphany in Bronte, and I'm honored to be here and to um, do this small part in helping to commend Krista's soul back to God. I want to begin with a prayer, sorry, with a song, and it's Psalm 139. <clears throat> Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all of my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness to you. Darkness and light are both alike. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. And the Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of all consolation, in your unending love and mercy, you turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life. Show compassion to your people in their sorrow. Be our refuge and our strength to lift us from the darkness of grief to the peace and light of your presence. Your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by dying for us, conquered death, and by rising again, restored life. May we then go forward eagerly to meet him, and after our life on earth, be reunited with our brothers and sisters, where every tear will be wiped away. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. I'm going to invite uh, some family or friends, or is it all family or family, to come up and share some thoughts on uh, Krista on May 1. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. I'll do my best to try and get through this. Um, but certainly kind of nervous. life and we're thankful that uh, mom had a full life and she lived that life in her home except for these last two weeks and around her family and her children her grandchildren great grandchildren and uh, we did we gathered around her to support her as her health failed and, and the family came together and that was really beautiful so people stayed even overnight with her at the hospital Mom, we're fortunate. Mom had that um, opportunity to say goodbye to a number of us. She physically and, and had her uh, mental ability to say goodbye. And as I see Jackie sitting there, I know that Jackie had a, a very close moment with her, and as, as others did as well. And as we were gathering around her, and I'm sure she said to not just myself, but she did say to me on more than one occasion, as you know, we were comforting her and trying to embrace her, she said, don't cry, don't be sad. She said, I had a, had a good life. And she was just so thankful for her grandchildren and her great grandchildren. And uh, I know one of the things I think about it in that life that she had, she was a mom, and she stayed to be a mom right till the end. And some of you know, with myself, um, I've had this pressure. Anyway, mom, mom was telling me, even when she could barely speak, to she was still being mom to me and telling me to uh, offload my bed behind. So even a mom to a 63-year-old, 63-year-old man. Still was caring for me, but that also reminded me of what I've heard. I heard more yesterday and I've, and over the last days about how she was a mom to many of us here. And obviously, she was a mom to some of the grandkids. I think of, so, you know, think of my kids, of, you know. And, but then there was Jackie that mentioned that too. Jackie. Um, I was on the phone with Patrick and many people that were saying how oh, she was a, like a mom to them. And that's a real testimony to her. And, and then, uh, again, uh, just a message that I had when Jackie said um, how lucky I was we, uh, to have such a wonderful mom and that we were all lucky to have her.
stressful and work and silly things that, you know, take away your energy from the little things that really count. And I just, like, it's just, like, Luna walks up the stairs and bangs on the top of the stairs at her house waiting for Grandma to say hello, hello, hello. <laughs> and we did it every morning. Um, and those are the, those are the things that, um, the small moments. Yeah. Who next? Um, thank you. Okay. So I wrote this about grandma. I don't know if it's that good, but I'll say it. <laughs> um, when you're planting a garden, there is work to be done. You reap and you sow year after year. You water and tend. You dig up what isn't meant for your soil and try something that might be. You weed out the pests and make homes for the critters you want around. You focus, prepare, and learn. You get your hands in the dirt when it's gloomy, and you bask in it when the sun is shining. It's selfless and rewarding at the same time. You don't get days off of being there for your garden or your plants when you suffer. And that's how my grandma took care of her life, um, with dedication, care, hard work, and a lot of love. With patience, trust, a devoted faith to God and a love so deep for her family and friends that she persevered through all of life's hardships. You okay? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, through sunshine, rain, intense storms, changing seasons, and winds that brought her from one moment to the next, my grandma lived a peaceful, serene, and graceful life. And even when the people she cared for were surrounded by weeds or pests or cold weather, Grandma always provided guidance, patience, and trust. Well, patience for the most part, actually. <laughs> and trust that we would survive the winter and find the light. Grandma always stayed hopeful and vibrant. She knows that her garden would withstand the tales of time as long as she treated it with the respect and care it deserved. And this is my reminder to all of you to be patient and kind to the things that you care about. Grandma worked hard and was always there when you needed her. Her metaphorical garden and her physical garden um, could always count on her to water them when they needed it. Grandma was feisty and independent and lived life how she wanted to. She gave to the people and places she cared about and did her best to be an understanding and compassionate person. And while I will desperately miss the countless small moments we've shared, um, the legacy of her life will always shine bright no matter the distance between us. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> away she was given a stuck with a, a big mortgage on the house and she didn't want to lose the house um, so from that point on uh, well she never had a job a regular job and she uh, had no income no credit so she got a private mortgage and I don't know how many years she worked <laughs> but it was many and uh, and then the countless different jobs that she had we Sheridan Nurseries out in the field. She worked at General Electric in the factory. She worked at the Swiss Canadian Bakery. Kensington. Yeah. Really? Tight, really. <laughs> 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 really she wore my hat. <laughs> uh, she did like some cleaning houses. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so there were a lot of pretty 
tough jobs, you know, um, working in the fields at shared nurseries, you know, out in the, out in the heat and everything like that. Working at the GE plant was a tough, tough job too. But anyway, she always provided uh, for myself and for my brothers, you know, when they were still at home and um, kept a, a great roof over our head and always, uh, always food to eat. She, uh, to me, was quite famous whenever I would come home as a teenager or basically at any time if I said I had to go out um, and I had no time for dinner, she'd make something for me. And she'd make it and, you know, she'd be like, how much time do I have? Do I have five minutes or do I have like 20 minutes? That would depend on what she would make for me. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, everybody who's here, you know, has, uh, has gotten to know her and uh, what she said was great and what Richard spoke about. So I won't, uh, I won't go on and um, <laughs> that's it. So thank you again.
not once, but four times. <laughs> and as promised, I know that our children will never forget your name, and they will never forget you, and you will forever be heard in our house as we rem reminisce about childhood stories and about all the beautiful things that just remind us of you. So thank you, Grandma. Okay. Okay. no greater vocation than to be a mother and a grandmother. And for when she's gone, to hear that kind of testimony, I just want to say that to you. Pansies, did you say? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I will not ever forget that. <laughs> you know what? You're all going to be pansies. <laughs> because that's her legacy. So my job today, besides the prayers, is to give a short message of hope. And I hope you hear it, and I hope you know it, and I hope you trust it, because although she has died, although she's not here with us, she is separated by a very thin veil. She is alive. Now, Scripture tells us that for everything, there is a season. Krista would have known that as somebody who loved gardens. But we're talking about a season of life. So for everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, or remove the dead head. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep. A time to laugh. And a time to mourn. And so it goes as we are reminded of the fragile and necessary nuances of life that happens to all of us in that space between earthly birth and earthly death. And we're here today, obviously, because the season of death has come into your midst. Krista, two faults. Beloved to you, your family, friends, <coughs> has now completed her journey in this life. Of course, no season of life truly exists to the exclusion of others. And so in the midst of mourning and weeping, it's such a loss. There will also be times in the coming days and months of shared laughter and love, as you recall, as you did just a few minutes ago, all those special moments. And treasure the memories and pass them on and come to terms with what has happened. As is sometimes the case, I didn't have the pleasure of meeting Christian in person, but I think we would have got along very nicely. I know among all the other things that you've talked about her as a mother and grandmother, she was one heck of a fighter, only succumbing after decades to the complications of cancer. Her legacy is one of love. Love for her children and her spouses, her grandchildren and her great-grandchildren. That is so obvious that I know we'll never forget that and that you will pass that down. The other, of course, was the gardening. I read in the obituary, and I believe it, to be true, that her home with its garden was a haven of love, laughter, and joy. Boy, you can't have anything more wonderful 
invites them back. You cannot. Don't even try. And you cannot live as long as Krista did, to beat cancer for as long as she was able, go through a war as a child, or love as hard as she did without having a wisdom and a spirituality that is born of tilling the garden, which I think Lexi, Lexi mentioned. She had a wisdom born of tilling the garden. And you saw it in her internal life too. So when I say she had a wisdom of the garden, I don't just mean the garden that she tended in her yard, but the garden of her own soul, which was mixed in with so much love. And as a woman of faith, she would have understand that, understood this, even if it went unnamed. I don't know if she ever commented to you on it, but it would have been very obvious to her. So powerful is the image of the garden as a spiritual metaphor in scripture that it appears in an unusually striking manner in both the Old and New Testaments hundreds of times, along with the psalms and poetry that give praise to the creation, bear witness to the fact that life is good, even in the midst of sadness. But naming only a few gardens, Krista would have known all about them, of creation, God set humanity in the Garden of Eden and walked with them. Then there is the place of sorrows, which is where Jesus spent his last night in prayer and anguish, the Garden of Gethsemane, where he asks that this cup may be passed by him, but not his will, but God's. Representing these difficult moments in our lives that we don't want to go through, but we do there, because it is not our will. From the cross, Jesus declared to the repentant sinner that he would that very day join him in paradise, a garden. And of course, it is in a garden that we find the empty tomb in the risen Christ. There's a reason why we have flowers at funerals and in churches at Easter. It represents the garden of life. And it is against the backdrop of these gardens that the divine drama we call salvation plays out. It is against that same background that the stories of our own life journey unfold. In our modern culture, most people think that the story of humanity is about birth, life, and death. That's the common narrative. We're here, and then we're gone. It's over. That's it. But for people of faith, even the smallest seed of faith, it's a little different. Confronted by the reality of death, our hearts and eyes are drawn to a different truth. A Christian does not merely die. They certainly do die, but they do not merely die. Rather, a Christian dies in Christ and therefore shares in that resurrection, finding new life in that garden. Christa died in Christ. Her story is not birth, life, and death but rather life, death, and resurrection. Or put another way, life, death, and life. Death and resurrection belong to the very essence of Christian belief. 
and what is resurrection but new life? Even though if we're honest, we have no real understanding of what life after life will look like. I would expect that it is, in some ways, encountered in these moments that we've had, but so much more. Transformed into a new and perfect reality where there is no pain and there are no tears, but joy and love prevailing. If all of this sounds like wishful thinking or just some simple words of comfort, let us remember that what we proclaim is less about the mechanics of what will be or what heaven might be like, but it's about relationships. As the psalmist reminds us, it is God who first calls us into being. And it is God who then calls us to a promised place he has prepared for us in his presence. The new life is about intimacy with Christ, but it is Christ who gathers us in. It is about the fullness of love and the restoration of creation, one individual at a time. It is about returning home as we will all day return home. Belief in the resurrection, of course, does not relieve us of our grief. This is a loss. It is a time of sadness and a time to grieve. But it is also a time to till our own internal gardens, to take stock of what we are facing today, and to trust that this is not the end. And so may the eyes of your heart give you the confidence to know that Krista has died into new life. And may you be comforted to know that in, in the unfolding of the greater scheme of things, death has no victory. Because all things to do with the mystery of life and death are under the watchful care and protection of God. Amen. all the day long in this sad life, in these sad moments, until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Would you join me in prayer? God of grace, we thank you for Krista, who was so near and dear to us, and who has now been taken from us. We thank you for the friendship she gave and for the strength and peace she brought. We thank you for the love she offered and received while she was with us here on earth. We pray that nothing good in her life will be lost, but will be of benefit to the world, and that all that was important to her will be respected by those who follow, and that everything in which she was great will continue to mean much to us now that she has died. We ask that she may go on living in her children, 
your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. In her, the rest of her family, you need her friends. In their hearts and minds, in their courage, and in their consciences. We ask that we who are close to her may now, because of her death, be even closer to one another. And that we may, in peace and friendship here on earth, always be deeply conscious of your promise to be faithful to us in death. We pray for ourselves that we do not try to minimize this loss or seek refuge from it in words alone. And also that we do not brood over it so that it overwhelms us and isolates us from others. May God grant us courage and confidence in the new life of Christ. And we ask this name in the name of the risen Lord. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of all, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to the earth we shall return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Christa. Acknowledge, we pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints of light. Amen. The eternal God is her dwelling place and underneath are the everlasting arms. Blessed is the Lord, our strength and our salvation. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. stand and we'll follow the casket from the chapel through the front doors.